Hi guys, welcome to Practice English with Paul. Now today's video is basically due to some requests. Many people have sent me private messages saying, well Paul, what is your advice when trying to give tips on how to improve your spoken English? Now there are many ways to do this and there's a lot of advice online. There's many other YouTube videos that talk about this. And I do feel that some of the ways aren't necessarily realistic. And I'm gonna give you some tips that can kind of help you um, to sort of practice your spoken English if you don't have contact with native speakers or other people. So if you're kind of learning on your own. Um, now, of course, um, there are ways that you can really master your English, your spoken English. If, for example, you get into a relationship with a native. I remember at university when I was studying German and uh, the last lesson before we went for a year abroad to Germany to study, I remember my professor said to me, boys and girls, if you want to improve your German like really, really well to become fluent, go to bed with a German. We were like, what? Well, that was unexpected, but actually I understood what my professor meant. He says, if you get into a relationship with a native, then of course you're gonna have to speak that language like just all the time. And that way, because you're faced with that language constantly, you'll get better a lot quicker. Um, but of course, for many people around the world, that is not practical. It just doesn't happen so often. It's like a small number. So what else can we advise then if you can't get into a relationship with a native? Well, a lot of people say make online um, friends using apps like italki and other things. Again, it's a great way to do it. Uh, you can meet a lot of people online, you know, some native speakers who would like to meet some uh, people abroad to kind of exchange cultural information. But what you have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, is this. If you're going to try and meet a native speaker to get them to teach you, they're not going to do it for free. That's a fact. If they are a qualified, you know, experienced teacher, it will not be for free. If you want to do something which is for free, it's more about cultural exchanges and just kind of like chatting with that. But again, do not expect native speakers to teach you English very well because we don't learn it in my country. We don't learn grammar at school, which is, I know, surprising, but it's true. Um, so you could be given a lot of misleading information. But again, for general speaking practice, you can learn a hell of a lot, okay? Um, but again, there are lots of apps that you can find yourselves. Um, the ones that I come to here are the ones that I actually find quite realistic if you are studying alone or you don't have contact to many other people. Um, this is something I was taught when I was studying German, like to read aloud. So for example, you know when you read like a text in your head, um, you actually feel that you're reading it fluently, like, God, I'm good at this. And the moment you read aloud, you're like, uh, 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 stutter, stutter, and it doesn't make sense. But when you read aloud, you hear your mistakes more. Um, you kind of use all of these new words in the kind of context. You look at certain structures and models that you can record into your memory, and you can repeat at a later date. Um, reading aloud is a very, very useful source of improving your spoken English if you don't have access to such things like this. Another good piece of advice is called shadowing, a TV series, podcast, radio. Now, shadowing is a very effective way of learning. It's not the easiest, and it's not, I suppose, I could say, um, the most practical, but it is very useful. Now, the idea of shadowing is like, imagine you're watching like a YouTube video, and you listen to a few seconds, you pause the video, um, you go back and you repeat with the speaker, with the intonation, with the language, uh, with all the grammatical structures, and then you continue to the next few lines, pause, go back, repeat with the speaker. So you're kind of using all of those structures that you're learning from a real native speaker, but you're shadowing, you're copying basically. And again, it's a very good way to um, improve your English. That's how many people sort of tell me they learn English through listening to you know, music bands. It's basically the same thing, isn't it? Um, you know, when you listen to music, I love Metallica, by the way. Um, you, know, you learn the words, um, even though sometimes the lyrics don't make much sense, but you learn the words and you sing along. That's shadowing, but do that for other things like documentaries or BBC or whatever. It's a very effective way of learning. It really, really is. The last one I've got is make your own examples from reference books. So um, what I mean by that is that, actually I have the book here. If we take this one, uh, Murphy's, which is famous, I've just used it in another video recently in question tags. Now the problem with Murphy's is that people might complete like a unit like this and finish, turn over, do the next one, finish, turn over and not remember a thing. And that's the problem with these reference books. 
What I tell students to do is, if you took like this uh, example here, and it's talking about prefer and would, would rather, I say once you've completed that answer, make your own model based on that answer. Change a few words and do it about five times aloud to play with the structure, to play with the grammar, to play with all of that vocabulary, use vocabulary from other sources. It's like, you know, when I teach conditionals, like if I had money, I would buy a house. I tell students, don't just learn the structures, and we practice a lot in class, repeating, 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 so it becomes instinctive. Then we throw other vocab and a conditional and start to really build the kind of fluent use. And that's the sort of same thing here. So again, you take some nice sort of units here and you kind of fill in the answers, but you make your own answer. You don't just turn the page and forget it. It is better to spend two or three days on one page than maybe two minutes because you know you won't remember it effectively. Master this, uh, make your own examples, use some funny words and it will really, really help. But do it aloud uh, and that's going to help your fluency. Because again, a lot of people try to find all of these magic ways to improve their spoken English. But effectively, you know, doing it aloud and shadowing is a very effective way if you don't have access to native speakers. Because again, some are not very good, some are, they can be quite expensive. So guys, those are my simple tips. There are many, many more I can give in other videos. And I'll be doing some demonstrative videos on this for you in the near future because we're upgrading with new cameras, lights, computer programs to edit and all of that stuff. So guys, I hope that was useful and I will see you soon. Goodbye.